Piracy on the internet has been around for a long time, so has malware. And it's pretty easy if you don't know what you're doing to download something that ends up wrecking your computer or stealing your passwords, all in the background while you think that the program you downloaded works exactly as you wanted to. How do you see if that's what's happening in the background? Well, I wanted to find that out, so I downloaded a malware sample and wanted to see if I could find the signs myself with no prior experience in reverse engineering. If you want to follow along, legally, this is educational purposes only, feel free to see what I do and give me critiques in the comments. Let's go. All right, so I already went ahead and prepared most of a virtual machine here. I even went ahead and changed the MAC address since the first part of this video is going to be really boring and it's going to be disguising your virtual machine to look like actual hardware. As you can see, I gave it a reasonable amount of RAM, 8 gigs. I gave it on the low end of what would be considered an average amount of cores, and I gave it 100 gigabytes of disk space. And these things are important because if you have a computer that has practically no resources, that's one of the easiest ways for malware to detect whether or not it's a virtual machine machine or some kind of analysis environment. Either way, if you try to see what it does on a machine like that, you're probably not going to get the same results. Next up for the network section, I have this set to host only adapter on a custom VBox net. And I have it this way so I can change the subnet that this machine considers itself to be a part of. Now I did that because VirtualBox automatically assigns 192.168.56.whatever. That specific string is pretty specific to VirtualBox, and again, malware can detect that. So I went ahead and created a new one, which bumped the third subnet to 57 instead of 56, and we're going to see if that works. Next thing is, I changed the first six digits of this MAC address to be completely random digits because the first six that are here are, again, very specific to VirtualBox and don't change whenever you hit this button. See, that's what they are. So I'm going to go ahead and change them again. Perfect. And unless you mess with your network settings, you're not going to see VBoxNet1 when you set this to host only adapter. So I'm going to show you how to get that really quick. You're going to go to File, Tools, Network, or just Control H. And I just went ahead and hit Create. That automatically created this VBoxNet1, which as you can see has a subnet of 57, unlike this one, which has 56. With that out of the way, let's start this box and let me show you what's in it. Okay, now that I'm in, I can go ahead and tell you a few things. First, this is a Windows 10. First, this is a Windows 10 Pro machine. And I've done a few things on this. First, I got a bunch of tools and I put all of them, including all the installs, in a separate directory from the standard program files one. That's one of the first places any malware will check for installs of analysis programs, you know, forensics tools, anything like that. You know, sys internal suite. And so in an analysis environment, if you have to put your tools on the same machine, it would be a good idea not to put them in that directory because they would be found almost immediately. As for the tools I have right here, this is a lot of stuff. You may not need all of this, but the ones that you absolutely do need are Sys Internals, which gives you a bunch of very specific but very important useful programs. You can go and get these on the internet. Just look up Microsoft Sys Internals. Some of the important ones are Auto Runs, which show you what runs automatically. So yeah, as you can see, it's not just programs, but also services. .sys files, which are also executable files alongside EXEs and DLLs, which can run code. DLLs are interesting, but we'll get there in a moment. And yeah, this is pretty standard. I haven't run the malware yet. I have it on the system, but that's what a clean auto runs profile looks like. Next up, we have Process Explorer. This is basically a better task manager. And with task manager, you actually can't get trees of processes like this. You only can go one down. You can see that all these processes start with wininit.exe, services, SVC, host, all the way down here, even down to the out-of-box experience. Lots of other stuff here to your explorer.exe, winlogon.exe, and if you had stuff like Brave or anything else open, it would also show up here all the same. So Process Explorer shows real-time data, but if you want to see more log-based data, you would use Process Monitor, and this shows you timestamped data of everything that happens on your computer. So the most recent thing is that this program queried for the existence of this file process monitor.exe, and that's because I opened it. Next, you have a bunch of registry keys. As you can see, this is very different because it shows timestamped information instead of stuff that happens in real time. Very useful if you want to see if a program is doing something sus on your computer. You can also filter for a lot of stuff too if you're able to narrow down a program or a DLL or something. This is where we get into kappa.exe, which is from the Flare team group. Let's take a look at this. So if we run it by doing dot and then backslash kappa.exe and then supplying it with a file path to the program we want to take a look at, we can see what it's capable of. So let's try itself. All right, I thought that was going to yield a different result. Let's try something else. Let's try an actual file. I'm going to right click, but before I hit right click, I'm going to hit shift, copy as path, go back to PowerShell, right click. 
and it looks like it pasted it with quotes already. So we're going to go ahead and get one set of quotes out of the way and let's run. Okay, we got a lot of stuff to work with. Keep in mind, this is just Brave.exe. This is a web browser and it can show you exactly what it is that this thing can do. Okay, file deletion. It has obfuscated files and information, access token manipulation. I'm not going to pretend to know what this means. Debugger detection, anti-debugging instructions. It can delete folders, it can delete files. Yeah, lots of stuff. If this were a Brave browser, you would definitely think this is malware, given the amount of stuff it can do. Luckily, it's not, and I know it's not because I downloaded from the official website. Now let's go ahead and run this on our piece of malware here. I'm going to do the same thing as before, which is to go to the malware itself and just right click and paste into PowerShell. So I'm going to start with the DLL here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to, oops, right click, copy as path, go into PowerShell, right click again, enter. So it's quite a bit faster, but let's see what it is we can see from here. So. It can get the file path that it's already in. It can allocate and change read, write, and execute memory. Now, any cracked program would have to be able to do this anyway, but the fact that it can do this means it's capable of being a virus. And obviously, it can stick DLLs on other EXE machines. And in case you don't know how DLLs work, DLLs aren't executable in the same way that EXEs and MSIs are, for instance. .exe files can run by themselves. If you were to double-click on them, they themselves would be executed. But for DLL files, you can't double-click on one and expect it to run. Something else needs to run it first. But DLL files can contain the same code that EXE files have and can then do other things on behalf of another program. Now, if you didn't have an antivirus, finding something that did this would be really complicated because in Task Manager, you're not going to see the DLL necessarily. You're going to see the program that's running it. And so the problem may not be the program that you're going to go kill because you recognize the issues coming from that program. It's going to be the DLL, which might be loaded by another program. In fact, that's how the Eternal Blue exploit worked. There'd be a payload delivered in memory, which would then be executed, which would be a DLL file, into another program, which was the print spooler on Windows 7. Anyway, circling back, none of this screams malware. In other words, nothing here is something only malware would do in this case. So we're going to keep looking. What else can we find? So I already ran Owl Kaiser on my machine, and it has a bunch of different outputs here. By the way, anything bad says that it would be detected as a virtual machine. And as you can see under the general sandbox slash VM detection, there's a lot of stuff here that would suggest that this definitely is a virtual machine. And now that we know that, let's go ahead and try running something here. Wow. Okay, that wasn't supposed to work this quick. What? All right, so I guess what I tried to obfuscate this virtual machine with, um, it worked, despite the fact that there are a number of other identifiers on it. Because last time I tried to open this without doing any of that, you know, when I, I had guest editions installed, I had a bunch of other stuff installed, this wouldn't open which means that there are anti-analysis measures in place on this device. And that begs the question, why would somebody who doesn't make money from this project care about obfuscating and detecting a virtual machine in their computer, on the computer that this program is running on, if it were legitimate anyway? And by legitimate, I mean not having malware on it. Anyway, that wasn't expected at all. I thought I was going to have to do a lot more work. So I guess all you need to do is run VBox Cloak and not install guest editions, and you should be fine. So let's see what our tools picked up here. If we go to system turtles and then auto runs, I think we see something sus right here. We have two new auto runs that showed up in the registry after we ran that program. And they both say they're from Microsoft Corporation, but they're not verified. Keep in mind, anything that comes from Microsoft is 100% going to be verified. So whoever wrote this wants us to think that this is from Microsoft. Let's take a look at Process Monitor. This is our logged, timestamped version of events here. Okay, looking up key gen didn't come up with anything. Let's see if we can find it now. Nothing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove this, and we're going to see if we can find something if we relaunch it and then check for the PID. Oh, Ableton key gen. Okay, still nothing. Capitalized? Still nothing. Let's try contains. Hit add, hit apply. Nothing. Oh, there we go. What did it immediately try to do? Oh, wow, it just keeps going. Temp key gen. Whoa! Okay, we have something now. App data local temp. Okay, so let's do app data. Local, temp, keygen.exe. Okay, copy as path. I don't have PowerShell open. Wish there was a way to minimize this. Okay, we have some kind of exe file now. Let's see what it wants to do. Kappa.exe. Right click. What can this thing do? Whoa! Oh, baby! <laughs> what did we find here? What can this thing do? Time delay. Check for unmoving mouse cursor. Geographical location. What? What? Oh, this thing is, oh, this thing is packed with stuff. 
Log keystrokes. Holy shit. Oh, these guys thought they were slick. Delete files, enumerate files on Windows. To keylogger. Oh my gosh. What on earth is a keygen doing putting its exe file in a temp folder and then having that temp folder do all the dirty work? First off, this thing didn't have any detections whatsoever. This thing is bad news. All I did was run VBox cloak. They, they could have put some better effort into detecting whether or not this is a virtual machine because my gosh. Yeah, kids, now you know. If you're going to run any kind of key gen, do some forensic analysis. This only took me so long because I had no idea what I was doing. If I was able to find this, can you imagine someone who's extra skilled? Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. I'm definitely going to be doing more videos on this. And if you guys enjoyed, subscribe. And I hope you all have a great day.